Welcome back to part three of this series on creating a finite state machine for an NPC. And what we're going to do now is add in our final state, which will be attack. So to begin with, we first need to set up our NPC to do that. And it's going to need bullets. I'm going to go to the tank. Let's find it in the scene. And we want to shoot from the tank. In the tank that you've been given, if you've downloaded my project, on the very end of the turret, if I can find it for you, let's just drop this down. You'll see that I've got a little cube just there. So I added a cube and I've rotated it and I've attached it to the tank at the position where I want the bullets to come from. Now you'll have to make sure you also turn off your box collider if you're doing this on a different model. But what's important is that this box is attached to your NPC so that when your NPC moves, this box does as well because it's the relative position for the bullets to come out of. So that's all ready to go there. Let's go back to the animator. And in here, we're going to add in our attack script. So right click, create state, empty, and we'll call this attack. And for our attack state, we will add the behavior of attack. And the code for our attack will look like this. So I'm going to replace the commented out code with the new code. Again, attack will take its lead from our base FSM class that we created so that it gets hold of the NPC data. Then we started up getting the information about the opponent and the NPC and the speed and all that, although it's not needed in this particular case. And we're going to call some methods that are inside the tank AI from this one instead. So we're calling back the other way this time. And now we've got our tank AI start firing when we enter in the attack state. And then on the update, we will continue looking at the opponent. I'm just using a really easy transform dot look at and then the opponent's position. You could put slurping and stuff in here if you want it to look a little bit more smoother. Uh, but for our purposes, this works quite nicely. And then when we exit, we're going to run a tank AI method called stop firing. The start firing, as you'll see in a minute, is an invoke repeating. So it's just going to start firing all the time while it's in the uh, attack state. And then just before it leaves the attack state, it will tell it to stop that firing invoked method. In the tank AI script, we'll add in those methods that the state is calling. So just underneath get player, I'll add in these three things. The method doing all the work is this fire one, and it's going to instantiate a bullet object from a prefab that we'll set up in a moment from its turret position, and that's the little cube that we created before and the turret rotation. So it'll make sure that it pushes the bullet along in the same direction that the turret rotation is set to. And it does this by using a get component rigid body on the bullet and then an add force of the turret's forward direction multiplied by 500 in this case. So this is the strength of the force that the bullet is coming out at. Now the two public methods here for start and stop firing are the ones that are called from back in the attack script. Stop firing will just cancel the invoke on fire, which happens when start firing is called. So the invoke repeating will start the fire method, which is the one up here, after half a second, and then it will continue calling it every half second after that. And now you can make this faster by making this value here smaller, or you could have the interval longer as well. Now the bullet itself needs to come through into the tank AI. So we'll make a public exposed variable at the top for that to drop it into. The game object also needs to know about its turret. So we'll put game object because that's what we're using to set up the alignment of the bullet itself. So with those both public, we can save all of this code 
switch back into Unity, find our tank, which is up the top here, and you'll see you've got a bullet and the turret. Now the turret you have to get from the cube that's attached to the tank, so we grab that and drag it onto there. And then the bullet, you'll find the bullet in the assets from the project that I've given you. Now this is the same bullet that's in the tank project that Unity has, uh, but I've added some extra script onto it. So just drag and drop that into the place for the bullet. If you have a really quick look at the bullet, and down the bottom there's a little bullet script here, and what it does is it instantiates an explosion when the bullet hits something and then makes the bullet disappear, essentially. All right, so that's already programmed for you in the resource file. Okay, so now we need to set up the attack so that the attack happens. If we're in chase mode, let's say we want to transition to attack, make a transition to attack, when we are, let's say, a distance of less than 10. So we've got a chase distance of 20, and now we'll have an attack distance less than 10. Now, if it becomes greater than 10, then we'll go back to chasing. So make transition back the other way, select that transition, and then we're going to add the condition of distance greater than 10. So if we now get out of a range of 10, it will go back to chase. So less than to attack and greater than to go back to the chase mode. Let's have a look at the behavior of our tank now. So we're patrolling. The patrol itself brings us close enough to trigger the chase. So it'll go off and start chasing us. Once it gets close enough, it will stop and start firing, as you can see there. Now it doesn't keep moving towards us because that attack behavior has no movement code in it whatsoever. It only has turning code. So if I just move, it will keep trying to fire in my direction. Now if I get far enough away, it will go back into chase and keep chasing me. And then if I get really far enough away, it will forget about me entirely and go back into patrol. Now, what I don't have here is a transition that goes from attack back to patrol or the other way, because this logic will fire straight through these states, uh, depending on how close you are. If I suddenly got within 10, it would go via the chase state into attack, and it wouldn't even have time to execute anything in the chase. So that's fine. I don't need an extra one here. Though, you know, you could, you could put one in there if you wanted, but in this case, it's absolutely not necessary. Obviously, it's now attacking me off screen because its waypoint took me, took close enough to my tank. And you can see that over here in the scene view, which is uh, a lot of fun. Okay, so if I just move again and get out of the road, it should forget about me and it'll reset its entering of the patrol and go back to waypoint one and continue on its little route. All right, so that is finite state machines in a nutshell, basically, and how to employ the state machines that are inside of the mech anim system to do that. And now you can see how easy it is and sort of logical, I guess, that the finite state machine is and that I guess what it really does over the old way of doing it is there's a lot of if statements left out of like distances and things like that that you would normally have to program into your mono behavior to change the state of your character. Uh, whereas this is going to do it all automatically for you in separate scripts that you can use on other characters. And of course, define different types of behavior for those characters, uh, even if they're in the same state. So I hope you enjoyed the series. Please remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you'd like access to this final version of this project, it'll be available to Patreon members. And do check out what you can get as a Patreon of my channel because you can also get access to the Udemy courses which cover a whole bunch of other topics that you might be interested in uh, for free. So uh, thanks for watching.